Midsommar is a dark comedy horror drama written and directed by Ari Aster. Midsommar was one of my most, if not the most, anticipated films of the year, due to me being a huge fan of the director's previous film, Hereditary, which is a film that I found emotionally horrifying and aesthetically impressive on every phase of filmmaking. And it brings me nothing but pleasure to say that Midsommar exceeded my expectations despite the fact that the film strayed away from what I originally expected from it. It's a film that by the end of it makes you feel terrified and powerless, but also achieving a feeling of beauty and liberation, which is also hugely emphasized by its atmospherical score, wonderfully composed by Bobby Kerlick. There are surprisingly already a bunch of explained analysis videos on YouTube that discuss Midsommar in greater detail, but in this video, I wanted to dive into the character themes driving Danny's character played by Florence Pugh who, by the way, just gives an exceptional breakout performance in this film, and I can only hope that she keeps picking these kinds of creatively challenging roles. When it comes to Danny's character, I was able to pick up on three distinct themes that all seem to relate to each other. These themes are trauma, abandonment, and family. Let's start the analysis off by discussing the more obvious traits of Danny's character, which is trauma. In the first act alone, we learn quite a bit about Danny. We learn that she has a tired out boyfriend who seems to be hanging only by a thread. She has some serious struggles with anxiety and panic attacks, and she has also been dealing with a dysfunctional family, most notably including a depressed suicidal sister. And we unfortunately learn very early that her sister inflicts the ultimate trauma onto her life with her horrendous, unforgivable suicidal and homicidal actions. Knowing that Danny already has issues with anxiety and panic attacks, this event only exacerbates these issues even further. This horrible event makes Danny's boyfriend, played by Jack Rayner, feel morally obligated to stick around in the relationship longer. Because no matter how shitty of a boyfriend you are, nobody wants to be known as the guy who left their partner after their entire family died. So Danny gets invited to Sweden along with the boys out of pure guilt and moral obligation, and she sees this as a good opportunity to get out and try to move on from her horrible tragic event that has obviously left her feeling emotionally empty. Unfortunately, that's not really how trauma works, so she naturally dragged all of that traumatic baggage with her to Sweden, and it manifests itself in different ways throughout the duration of her stay. The first time we see her post-traumatic stress come into play, was when after she was peer pressured into taking shrooms when she initially arrives. She trips out for a while and seems to maintain a calming attitude at first, but then she suddenly gets triggered by a panic attack brought on by her recent trauma. This manifestation is conveyed when she's desperately running towards the bathroom while she's verbally beating herself up to calm down, which by the way is a respectably accurate detail of PTSD and panic attacks. As someone who also struggles with serious anxiety and panic attack issues, this was a refreshingly honest detail to include that gave her character and the film overall an insightful relatability. But anyways, once she gets to the bathroom, we get a quick horrifying image behind her of her dead sister with the gas tube stuck in her mouth, which again is simply conveying that her traumatic stresses are tormenting her even though she's trying her best to just enjoy the quote unquote vacation. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pivot to the theme of abandonment because the rest of the scenes from this point on already have the thematic element of trauma implicitly layered in. The next scene that really made me understand that abandonment was a prominent theme in the film was Danny's nightmarish dream sequence. I believe it's on the second night where Danny has a dream where she wakes up to her entire group, leaving her behind with Will Poulter's character staring her in the face as they all drive off into the night. We also get sudden flashes of some disturbing imagery that recalls back to the suicide ritual. We get a shot of an image of her dead sister with a gas tube in her mouth as she sits in between the two dead cult elders who jumped off the cliff. This is where her thematic conveyances begin to come full circle and makes this particular scene rather important to understanding her full character. We learn the specifics of her anxieties which to me has to do with her fear of being abandoned and being left without anyone to lean on. This is why her nightmare shows her intentionally being left alone while the rest of her group escapes. And the image of her dead sister sitting in between the two cult elders is the product of her post-traumatic stress connecting the parallels between the suicides of the elders and the suicide of her sister. The abandonment anxiety can also be read into the image due to the death of her sister representing the total loss of the family fabric. The fear of abandonment is also conveyed through her character actions throughout the entire film. Notice in the beginning of the film when she's talking to her friend about her boyfriend issues and how she frames the conversation. She frames it from the perspective that she is the bad guy. She brings up that she might be pressuring him way too much with her family issues and that she doesn't want her baggage to drive him away. 
In fact, notice that throughout the entire film, she seemingly frames everything from the perspective that it is her fault rather than the fault of her partner, which by the way goes by the name of Christian. For example, like when Christian's friend named Pele gives her a nicely drawn sketch of her for her birthday, and she is really delighted by it but then mentions that Christian actually forgot her birthday, she tries to recover it by saying that it's actually her fault because she forgot to remind him. And also take notice of how hard she tries the entire film to keep the relationship alive and intact despite how uncaring and incompetent Christian was. Even after she found out that he was planning to go to Sweden without her and without even telling her, she still just wanted to have a conversation about it and keep the relationship together when she could have easily read the obvious sign of him wanting to go a long distance away from her regardless of all the trauma she's been going through. She also decided to give in to peer pressure and take the shrooms even though she didn't want to just because she didn't want Christian to look bad in front of his friends. And also remember she even went out of her way to pick him flowers. She picked him flowers. Again, this is just showing that her abandonment anxiety is manifesting itself in the form of doing everything she can in order to maintain a relationship that she knows deep down is completely shoddy. And this is just because she feels like nobody else will be willing to put up with her baggage and mental issues, especially now more than ever because she literally has no family to rely on after her sister's suicide slash homicide, even if they were to break up. It's only until she has her important conversation with Christian's friend Pele after witnessing the shocking cold elder suicides is when the theme of family really kicks into gear. While she is melting down and telling Pele that she is going to leave, Pele explains to her that he actually knows how she feels because his parents got burned up in a fire when he was a child, so he was technically an orphan. But his community has always given him a home, support, and comfort that a family is supposed to provide, so he's never felt alone and abandoned despite not having his own bloodline family. And this revelation seems to appeal so much to her current situation and anxieties that she actually pauses and listens to what he's saying despite witnessing something really shocking. Pele holds her hand, and when she brings up Christian, he asks her if she truly feels held by him and that if he actually feels like home to her. And she really felt that, because she realizes that it does not matter if you have someone that you can claim as yours, if your partner doesn't really care about you, you might as well be alone because at the end of the day, you are alone even if someone claims to be your partner. So this is why after this point, she is more willing to go along with the festivities and stick around because she realizes that this community might be the only sense of security she currently has. So when we reach the third act of the film where she wins the women's dancing contest and becomes the May Queen, she gives Christian one last stare at the table to let him know that she's totally aware about him eyeballing the redhead named Maya the entire stay. But Christian being the fuckboy that he is, still decides to go through with having sex with Maya even though he had every chance in the world to stop and reject the advances. And just one fun side note to point out in terms of symbolism is notice that when Danny goes off to plant the seeds and bless the fertility of the soil and crops with the rest of the women, her partner Christian is having a fertility blessing experience of his own. Anyway, she comes back knowing that there's a daunting possibility that Christian is having sex with Maya and no matter how much she braced herself for what she was about to see, the sight was too atrociously hurtful for her to bear. She vomits and has an intense emotional breakdown. This is when we get a thematically and emotionally important scene where a group of women from the community all try to harmoniously share her emotion and grief along with her. This is again reinforcing the notion of having a family to rely on and having that emotional support that a proper family is supposed to provide. It's one hell of a scene for the film's narrative but it's also thematically and emotionally powerful for the film's central character. So when Danny, which is the current May Queen, is given a choice to sacrifice her partner Christian or one of many different strangers of the community, she chooses to sacrifice Christian. Why? Well, for one, she doesn't know the strangers on a personal level and probably wouldn't feel right sacrificing somebody that could be completely innocent, especially if she is now fully aware of what a piece of garbage Christian is. But secondly, and most importantly, it's because she is absolutely fed up with the past and wants to begin her life anew with this community that she now sees as her new family. The sacrifice of her former partner and the burning of the temple represents the destruction of her past traumas, past relationship, and past family issues. This is why her face and emotion goes from incredibly grievous and regretful to elated and liberated as we see her put on a smile through the many dissolved frames of the burning temple. She found a new family where she can now let go of her abandonment anxiety and past traumas and finally embrace herself in a small foreign community that she can now rely on for support. This is why it's considered to be the ultimate breakup film. 
Not to mention, she can also pursue the genuine romantic connection that has developed there with Pele. Yeah, we all saw that slick ass smooch he gave her while she was being crowned May Queen. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I am currently unhealthily in love with Midsommar, and I hope that this analysis video gave you some different insight that you may not have gotten with other videos. In my eyes, Ari Aster has a strong 2 for 2 record, and I'm already highly anticipating his next film. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and hearing my insight on Midsommar. If you really enjoyed what I had to say, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. <laughs>